Welcome back everyone, viewer beware, month 25. We are reading Vampire Breath and Calling All Creeps. How you doing? I'm okay. I fell down the stairs, I'm okay. Yeah, I thought this was a solid month. I think it's an okay month. Yeah. I think it's a better month than we are used to, Yeah. but we're still not back to a great month. Um, I don't really have a lot of ramble to say this time. Um, this video is a little late. Um, We've had a lot going on in both of our lives for very different reasons. It's been a fucking month. Um, I only just read this book, like, three days ago or something. So I was just like, not this book, that book, three days ago. Um, so it's been fun. Um, but we don't care about that because we're talking about Goosebumps. And yeah, it's it's an okay month. Yeah. I, I don't have a whole lot to say about either of these books. One of them is, like, complete, like, filler. And the other one is, like... It's fun. It's, you know, it's it's a good book. And it's not the one you'd expect. No. So let's talk about Vampire Breath, which is the filler book. Yeah. Um, and that's the one that I'm talking about. So I was a little excited for this book because vampires. Mm. Vampires, very, very popular horror, horror trope. We ain't seen one in Goosebumps yet. I love vampires. Um, I didn't like the vampire in this book. No. Um... For a book about vampires, the main the main draw and plot element is not vampires, which is fucking bizarre. This is the issue I'm noticing when we get into these later books, is they're getting... It's almost like the demographic of Goosebumps is getting lower and lower. Yeah. We can't have a vampire that's drinking people's blood. Um, we can't have ghosts that actually die. Yeah. Vampire Breath's great issue is it's just not taking itself seriously enough. And with a vampire book, I wouldn't mind that. I'm just saying. I would have been okay with like more of a straight up horror book this time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues that Stein's running into at this point in the run um, is that because he's written so many of these books and he's assuming that there's some dumb kids out there that's reading every single one of these mm -hmm. books, you have to do different stuff. Um, my issue with that is doing a vampire book is different enough. But when he comes back to doing a ghost book, it's just another fucking ghost book. So he's doing it in the wrong place. Yeah, absolutely. If we had a time travel ghost book, oh, are we cooking? Just give me a vampire book, man. <laughs> just, just, I want to suck your blood, and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm an, I have another issue I only just noticed. The ellipses on the back here has four dots. <laughs> are you Neil Breen? What is going it's, on? It's, um... It, it's just for the reprint, you know, that's that, the sign had nothing to do with that. No. You know, I'll just pass that back here, because I need to learn the kids' names again anyway. Yeah, go ahead. So, I actually haven't tried to re-familiarize myself with this plot. I read this book probably close to a month ago. Um, so, I'm just going to try my best to give you the plot. Lucky, not a lot happens. Um, so, you've, the main character is a guy called Freddy, and he's got his best friend, Kara. really weird thing about these two is that they're always fighting each other. But that's just, like, what they do. That's their fun. They'll have a full-on fucking, like, WWE Smackdown vs. Raw 2005. And then it's just like, ha ha ha, we're just playing. Um, one day, they're at Freddy's house. I'm skipping a good couple chapters here. Um, they're at Freddy's house, and Mum and Dad have to go out. Um, don't you kids do anything naughty while we're out? Okay, Mum. Hey, the car's left the driveway. Come here. <laughs> they're doing that down in the basement. And they knock over mum's whole fucking cabinet of fine china. And they're like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. And then the plot starts. They go, hey, wait a second. Behind the cabinet is this fucking old door. So they open the door and it leads to like this like tunnel. And then Freddy's like, no, this makes sense, Kara. Because the empty lot next door, there's no house. It's just an empty lot. Um, so let's go. Um, they're walking through the tunnel. They eventually come to a room with just a coffin in the middle of it. And they open the coffin, and there's nothing in it. Empty coffin. But if you look down in the corner, there's a bottle with a label on it that says Vampire Breath. And they're like, haha, Vampire Breath, that's silly. Open it. Out comes this, like, green smoke, and it smells sour and disgusting, and the kids are coughing. And then, once the smoke clears, there's a vampire in the coffin. Vampire wakes up. Oh, I'm Count Nightwing. Um, I'm so very thirsty. Why don't you kids come over here? Maybe I'll drink a little bit of your blood. They never say the word blood. He just says he's very thirsty. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm thirsty. Kids come over here and they go, no, run away, the vampire. He wants something from us. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't have to say it. We all know what's happening. Um, the kids run away, but the door, they're about to get to the door, and they see somebody close the door. This detail never comes back. Um, and then they're like, no, 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 the door's locked. What are we going to do? And then Count Nightwing. I always want to say Count Orlock, but that's yeah. that's Nosferatu. Yeah, no. So Count Nightwing grabs a pink Kara, and he's about to drink her blood, and then he goes, wait a minute. I don't have my fangs on me. <laughs> when I when I leave my fangs, and the kids are like, "What?" And the count's just like, "No, you know, when you're a vampire, you live so long, your memory starts to go. That's why we have vampire breath. You know, it like helps us. It, it gives us back our power, and also it fucking fixes my memory. If I could just get my bottle of vampire breath, I could, I know that I can remember where I left my fangs. Um, so they find the bottle of vampire breath. They open it up. Um, and the kids get caught up in it as well, and they actually get travelled back in time to the vampire castle that Count Nightwing is the head of. So they're in this giant room full of all these vampires, and all the vampires wake up, but the kids are hiding, so the vampires turn into bats, and they fly away into the night. Creatures of the night bullshit. Um, so then the kids are like, Hey Count, you weren't supposed to take us back in time with you, that wasn't part of the deal! And then the Count's just like, What the fuck are these kids doing here, man? Uh, tell you what, kids. We've traveled back in time, so my bottle of vampire breath should be full at this point. Because <laughs> it wasn't full at the current point in time, but now that we're back in time, the bottle is full again. So if we can just find where I left my, my full bottle of vampire breath, it'll send you back to your time period. Um, and the kids are just like, fucking okay. And they spend a couple chapters trying to escape, because they're like, we're not going to trust this fucking vampire. They try jumping out the window, and they realize the castle is on top of a cliff. Um, and they eventually find this little vampire girl. Forget her name. Doesn't matter. I think it was Gwendolyn. I was gonna say Gwendolyn or something. Um, and Gwendolyn's just like, Are you guys vampires? Don't suck my blood! And they go, No, we're not vampires, and we're not thirsty, so what's up? And Gwendolyn's just like, The vampires trapped me here and they forced me to clean their coffins. They forced me to clean a hundred coffins in one day! Can you imagine that? I'm just a little guy! <laughs> um... And then Gwendolyn's like, I know a way to escape the castle. Come down into the cellar with me and I'll show you the way out. And the kids are like, I'll trust you, random little girl we just met. And they go downstairs with her. And sure enough, Gwendolyn starts laughing because she's a vampire. She's got her fangs. She's going to feast on these little kids. Count Nightwing comes down and he's like, Gwendolyn, how dare you? <laughs> Those children, they are not for you. And they fight a little bit. Um... And they, the kids run away, and they run into a room that's full of empty bottles of vampire breath. Um, and then in comes the Count, who presumably beat up a little child. Um, and he's like, ah oh, yes, now I remember. I hid my full bottle in with the empties, because none of the other vampires would even go to the empties room. So they're searching all the bottles, trying to find the full one. They eventually do. They fucking play piggy in the middle with the fucking vampire. I can't remember what happens after that. I think the Count grabs a hold of Freddy, um, and then, like, Kara opens the bottle or something, and they all get taken back to the the tunnel from the start of the book. Um, and then Count's like, No, we're back here again! I'm gonna get you kids! And they all run, run, run out of the tunnel. They come back out into the basement, and Mum and Dad are home. And it's like, well, what are you kids doing? Mom, Dad, there's a vampire in there. What What are you talking about? And then out comes the Count. And then Mom goes, Daddy? And the Count's like, oh, my little girl, what are you doing here? And then it turns out the vampire is Freddy's grandfather. And Freddy's mother is a vampire. And Freddy's father is a vampire. And it turns out Freddy is also a vampire. But your fangs don't grow in until you're a teenager. Kara's just like, ha ha ha, I'm in danger. <laughs> and then the Count's like, oh yes, I couldn't find my teeth, daughter of mine. And the daughter goes, fucking, that, when you left him in the bathroom, it's just behind the fucking, the cabinet with the mirror that all fucking bathrooms have. And he goes, oh, and he goes and he gets his fangs. And that's how the book ends, really. Just with like, oh no, in the cabinet. That's right, there's a real fucking... They open the cabinet and there's werewolf something. Um, werewolf skin. Is it werewolf skin? No, that's, no. that's another book. Yeah, they open up the cabinet, there's like a werewolf something, you know. Werewolf sweat. Werewolf sweat. And then Kara goes, ha ha ha, wouldn't this funny? And she uses it. 
And then she starts growling, and that's the end of the book. Um, look, I, I wish there was more vampire stuff in the vampire <laughs> book. That's my main takeaway. There's no stakes, because the vampire no doesn't have any teeth. No, yeah. So it's just a bunch of kids fucking around a castle for 100 pages. Yeah. I don't know. The book's not bad. We've had bad books. Yeah. The book is just, it was very easy to read. Yeah. And I have was, no notes. Yeah. No notes whatsoever. No notes? Nope. Interesting. I didn't take any notes for Calling All Creeps. I took plenty of notes for Calling All Creeps. <laughs> um, yeah. This book is, yeah, it exists. It's not one of the bad ones. I don't know why it had to be time travel. I, I don't <laughs> know why it was time travel. Um, I would, yeah, prefer if we were just doing vampire stuff. I don't care if it's just the kids get trapped in an abandoned mansion, there's a vampire there, and they need to find a way to survive until, like, the sun rises or something. You really didn't want to say until dawn. No, I did not want to say until dawn. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me check my notes. I don't think I have anything, like, that substantial to say. It's just... it. It's a book. It's really easy to read. Yeah, okay. I, I actually wrote nothing about the book itself. I wrote these kids are insane. Insano I think, style. Insano style. I think that was just from the kids fighting the whole time. Yeah. You got really into that. I was, um, I really remember that as a plot. Well, because it was so fucking weird that like yeah. the story starts yeah. with like the kids are fighting each other all the time. That's what his best friends do. Um. Yeah, no, um, I really, really did fly through this book in a way that I don't You usually, flew like a bat. Like a bat through it. Um, I usually struggle to read these books. I'll read a couple chapters and just be like, fuck, that's all I can take right now. And I'll put it down and I'll scroll my phone for a bit or I'll like watch a YouTube video and then I'll come back and read a couple more chapters. This book is just right through it. It was the same with Calling All Creeps, actually. Mm. I read a lot of that in one go. But yeah, with this one, it was just like start to finish, like done. Um, so, I don't know, that's why I don't hate it too much, because I don't yeah. struggle to fucking read it. Like, I, I, was... I really have no opinion on this book at yeah, all. Yeah, it's a bit like that. Yeah. This is my problem when it's going to come to <laughs> ranking these books, yeah. because it's like, how the fuck, the scales are so fucking shifted, it's like, yeah. how the fuck do you rank it? The, your standards change the more you read of these, because I feel like, for example, Welcome to Dead House is on the board. If we read it later in the series, it would be much lower. Lower? I reckon it'd be much higher, depending on where we read it. But it's just, it's a ghost book. It's another ghost book. But it's a ghost book where, like, shit actually happens. I feel like the standards drop the further in you go. And then you read something that's, like, slightly okay. And then you're like, whoa, whoa. I don't know. I don't know if Welcome to Dead House is that different from other ghost books. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe you're just obsessed with that book. I, that's, I liked it. <laughs> I, know, I liked it. It's okay. Maybe I should read that book again yeah. after we read the last yeah. book. And then be like, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm thinking of reading Deep Trouble again just for you. <laughs> just so I can cement my opinion on that stupid shark book. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a shark book. It's, a, it's got a shark on the cover. It's not a shark book. It's a shark. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about the TV I'm taking? <laughs> TV adaptation's okay. Changed a lot. It did change a lot. It does what it says in the tin, but it changed a lot. Um, so the first big change is that it's no longer Freddy and his best friend. I think they're twins, because they have the same birthday. Yes, they, they must do. be twins. They're turning 13 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, which, obviously, if you know the twist at the end, you know how that affects the story. Um, again, it doesn't affect it until the very end, though. Mm. Um, what? I, I guess next we talk about Jimmy Fallon. Well, actually, we should say, like, the setup changes where instead of them wrestling through the basement, they're trying to look for their birthday presents. Yeah, that's right. Again, they took out... It's just so fucking weird that they were wrestling the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, they're looking for their birthday presents. The setup, so much better. And it's so much better that it's brother and sister instead of guy mm. and friend who becomes irrelevant by the end of the book. Um, and then, yeah, they, they go through the same stuff. They go through the tunnel. They find the coffin. This time they open the coffin and I actually had a thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm remembering now. I think we're talking about the TV adaptation because they took it out. Um, they open the fucking coffin and there is a um, motherfucking vampire in there without them needing to open the vampire breath, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think or do so. Or they open the vampire breath and then he falls out of the coffin himself. Yeah, I don't think they open the coffin yet. No, I think he, he opens it himself after they open the vampire yeah. breath. Yeah. yeah. But this is my weird thing about in the original book, sorry, to jump back to the book. <laughs> Um, they open the vampire breath the first time and it actually does nothing except for put the vampire there. Mm. But now that we know when you breathe in the vampire breath, it, tra it travels you through time. So, like, what happened there? They traveled through time, the, like, in the first place to have the vampire appear there. 
And that's also when the guy closed the door on them. This is where I'm like, I think Stein just sort of makes up the story as he goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He all, thinks of the ending first. <laughs> all he knew was in the end was that the kid was going to be a vampire. Yeah. That's it. Um, but yeah, weird plot points that go nowhere. So this book's actually going to go lower, having pointed that out. Um, but TV Habitation doesn't have that problem. Um, Count Nightwing looks like Jimmy Fallon. Did we settle on Jimmy yeah, Fallon? Yeah, oh, we kept changing our opinion. I thought he looked like Beethoven. You thought he looked like the villain from Undercover Brother. Yeah. He was... He was a lot of things, but he just looks like a... Well, another thing I pointed out, he looked like the villain from Madam Web because what happens there is they need to make him look older because there's two time jumps, so they just give him greyer and messier hair. I don't know what the plot of that movie is, and every now and then I'll hear a detail about it. <laughs> I I watched that movie. I don't know what the plot I'm is. I'm so sorry for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> He was okay. He didn't look old enough, but then part of the point was that whenever he breathed in the vampire breath, he got younger. So I'll allow it. But Every he... time, did it once. He did do it once, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, every time he did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know how much there is to say about it. No time it, travel. Instead of the time travel, that's right. Instead of the time travel, they go down a fucking slide. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of Horrorland when they go down the eternal slide. Well, it reminded me of the Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns is Dracula and it's the super happy fun slide. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, fucking course there's a Simpsons reference in there. And, and of course it's like perfect as well. Yeah. And it's like a there's a map painting that looks like a SpongeBob background of all these coffins that don't go anywhere. It's just like, there's a bunch of vampires yeah. here. Trust us. Um, you meet a little girl. It's the same. My name's Gwendolyn. I'm Kara. Do you want to say that a bit louder? No. My name is... My name is... Oh, yeah, that's, that's a cool name. <laughs> it's Norwegian. Um, it's the same fucking thing. Um, what the fuck else happens? The set down there did look pretty cool. Yes. And they had really nice dry ice and fog. We really don't get a lot of sets recently. Last time, the last TV adaptation we got was Attack of the jack o lanterns which was just straight yeah before that oh we had how to kill a monster that was a pretty nice like bayou but it wasn't like completely out of this world like we've seen in a couple of other it wasn't some like surreal set or anything it was just like a swamp which was again a nice change of locale Mm. um it reminds me when we read fucking um curse mommy's tomb Mm. and we were like wow it's not just set in america (laughs) um but yeah, I, I don't know how much more. They, they did a good job. They tightened a couple bolts in there, but it's still just vampire breath, and it's still yeah. just okay. Um, the vampire's a lot creepier in this one. When I say creepier, I mean the wrong kind of creepy. Yeah. Girls offer such a sweet, delicate bouquet. So refreshing. I wonder if Dracula runs a Discord server. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's your fucking granddaughter, dude. <laughs> calm he, he calm down know. a little bit, buddy. <laughs> he didn't know. Um, the shot of him finding his teeth, I actually thought was pretty funny. Mm. Um, but yeah, when he when he takes in the vampire breath, um, he gets his powers back, and he's like, oh, "I remember exactly where I put my fangs." Um, and he goes, to "The little girl's like, you're bugging me." <laughs> She's a bug. Um, for the fuck else? They they do a shot. They turn the shot upside down, so it mm. looks like he's crawling on the ceiling. And it's so like, goofy. why? Just fucking chase. Just walk, dude. And he just <laughs> comes out. He's like, yeah. Why? So weird. Why are you slowing yourself down? Just fucking power walk to the kids. Why are you gonna fucking handicap yourself? <laughs> That's another Madam Web reference because that villain's always climbing the ceiling. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. They did it. It was vampire breath. Um, like when the parents grow fangs, it looks ridiculous. Uh. Yeah, the mother's prosthetic thing looked terrible. But she's got these weird gaps in her front teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else looks fine. Yeah. And the mother's just looks fucked up. Like, the, the effects of, like, them growing the fangs as well is clearly just, like, a still shot of a close-up. But I'll allow it. Yeah. And, like, the fact is they get their fangs when they turn 13. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's in one minute from now, kids. And then and... a minute from then, the kids go, oh, oh. <laughs> And then they sleep in coffins. The coffin shot is weird, and it's, but it's funny. I liked the coffin ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good night, sis. <laughs> they just accepted, like, yeah, we're vampires. Fuck it. Well, what the fuck else could they do? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 
<laughs> you know what it was? It was fucking, um, what was the one that you hated? I'm forgetting the name of it. It's like the best book we've read. Monster? Monster Blood? No, the other one. I can't believe I'm forgetting its name. Did we read it recently? No, very start. I can't believe I'm forgetting its name. Can you tell me what happens in it? It's the one where you find out the family's monsters in the Oh, world. and the girl who cried monster. Girl who cried monster. I can't believe I Jesus forgot that Christ. one's name. Jesus Christ. Um, it was just the yeah, ending of girl who cried monster it was, again. It was yeah. the same thing. Um, um, but you know, you had the funny coffin part in the end, but mm -hmm. only in TV adaptation. But yeah, it was TV the same adaptation was ending. better. Yes, yes, it was better. The vampire was a lot more menacing because he was like strangling them and shit. Yeah. I don't know anything else to say about this one. Yeah, well, Do you want to talk about creeps? I would like to talk about calling all creeps, please. How dare you haggle with me? I am immortal. I am invincible. That's the title card, huh? Hmm. Brave boy. Foolish. But brave. I wonder where he had it. We had it straight away. You missed my joke. What title card? I am invincible. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Do you? Call it old creeps. Um, I quite like this one. You don't seem as warm to it. I, I do like it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think it goes very high up, but it's good. I think the main reason I like it is it's a very rare book where I don't know where a Goosebumps book is going. Yes. Yes. Well, this book, it is part of what makes it good is it changes halfway through. Yeah. That's what makes the book fun to read. Um, but then, you know, it has to wrap its story up within one chapter. <laughs> I liked the ending. It does need to slow down a bit. It is very abrupt, but it is built up to. Yeah. Why don't you give us the plot for this one? Because I actually didn't take a single note for this book. Okay. So, I really don't have a lot to say. That's okay. <laughs> so this book starts in media res with our boy Ricky. Um, he is breaking into the school at night, um, and he is going to pull a prank on the school newsletter editor, Tasha. Um, and he's going to put in a little, little editorial in the tomorrow's edition, which says, Calling all creeps. Please call after midnight. Tasha at 555 whatever. So this kid just docks to woman. And you're like, okay, well... <laughs> what what led up to this kid making such a decision? And it should be said as well, doing a Goosebumps intro in media res, mm -hmm. I can't think of any other books. One Day at Horrorland. Did it? Yeah. Where and did I, that one start? And I pointed it out, it starts in the coffin ride, and then it cuts to them entering Horrorland, and then it cuts to them in the car. I pointed it out then, because it was an in media res, in media res, and I fucking hated it. What the fuck? I don't even remember that. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, you can look back. I had a whole discussion about it because that, that pissed me off. Yeah, right. This does well, it this like... is the first book to do yeah. it properly. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so it cuts back to Ricky joining the um, news editor place. Um, he needs it as an elective. Um, and Tasha's like, well, you're a weirdo, but whatever. Everyone hates this kid. Uh, he's... Um, He's a 6th grader, Tasha is an 8th grader, and there's these group of 7th graders that are picking on him. There's something that I picked up on, there's like a grade culture in this book. It's, this school is weird, it doesn't yeah. get spoken about a lot in the book, but yeah. it's a weird school. Yeah, there's some. There's like a culture where these grades are just picking on each other, but especially Ricky. Everyone calls him a creep, he's not a huge fan of it. And like when he gets into the newspaper business, Tasha absolutely does not respect him. She's just like, I want you to go out and I want you to count all the dirt patches and I want you to tell me why there is no grass growing there. And it just reminded me of Omega, count every grain of sand in this desert. <laughs> count how many sand is here, Omega. That's your first okay. mission. <laughs> why the fuck would you make him do that? It passes That's the time. gonna take so long. Shut <laughs> um, <laughs> up, what have you done? Yeah. And so Tasha's like, okay. Ricky, I'll give you a serious job. We've got a car wash going on tomorrow. You go over and you take some photos. So he goes over there, and obviously the seventh graders are there with their dad's fancy cars, and they start spraying water at him. 
And so he gets back in them by spraying water into the cars of the dads and like, no, not the dad's fancy cars. Um, and then Tasha finds out and she's like, well, you're gone. And Ricky's like, no, I really need the credit. So that's what gives him the idea to do the prank. He's like, oh, ho, ho, I'm going to get back at her. Mm. And then at midnight, he starts getting calls from these people. And he's like, wait a minute. And it's like, hello, this is a creep. When are we going to meet? And he's just like, what the fuck? Okay. And he keeps getting these calls. Like, when will the creeps meet? And it starts showing up in messages at his school. And he knows the seventh graders are treating him differently. And then he finds out that Tasha found out what he was doing and changed his message so that it was his name and his phone number in the newspaper. Um, and there's also this friend that joins the school named Iris who's like Ricky's only friend. She does nothing in this book. You can basically ignore her. Uh, she does at the very end. <laughs> yeah, one thing. <laughs> There's one thing at the end of the book. Yeah. But she's good motivation for yeah. Ricky, though. Yeah. Because... The moral centre. Well, because she's she's new to the school, so she doesn't know that no one likes him. Mm. So he's trying his fucking hardest to have at least one friend. Yeah. Um, and that's good motivation for him throughout most of the book. That unfortunately gets side railed by, oh, I've got to get back at Tasha. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, he ends up getting confronted by the seventh graders who transform into lizard creatures and they reveal themselves as the creeps. And they believe that Ricky is their commander because he put the out of the newspaper. So he's like, okay, we have this plan. We've got these identity seeds. We need to feed them to the kids at the school and turn them all into creeps. And Ricky's like, oh. I don't want to do that, but they're going to eat me otherwise, so I'm just going to pretend to be their commander and just go along for the ride. Um, and there's this one part where, like, they're trying to fill the identity seeds into, like, this batter, and he's just like, oh, okay, I'll go do it, and then he trips and spills all the identity seeds, and then the guy's like, oh, it's okay, I've got another bag. He's like, oh, no, my plan is foiled. <laughs> you could, what I would do, you just keep spilling them until he runs out. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, fuck him. So Iris eventually comes in because she realises what's going on. Um, and she realises that Ricky's, like, because he's refusing to transform into one of these creeps, they're starting to think that he's sabotaging these plans. So Iris is like, hello, Commander, I am your sergeant or whatever. You need a, we need to get this plan together and turn everyone into creeps. We, we won't transform because we're being subtle or whatever. And the creeps are like, oh, okay, well... You're clearly also a creep, and we trust you, so I guess we're not going to eat Ricky. We can take this at face value. Absolutely. What's going on? And Ricky's like, wait, Iris, you're a creep? It's like, no, I just, I figured out what the hell was happening. You're clearly weighing over your head, man. we gotta, we got to come up with a way to stop this. Yeah. So uh, the plan is there's a bake sale on, and they're going to bake the identity seeds into the cookies. Um, and so they get to the school... And Ricky's trying to plead to the kids not to eat the free cookies. It's not worth it. And they won't listen to him. They're like, hey, Ricky, creep Ricky, you're Ricky the rat. We won't hear any of this bullshit. Ricky. He's a little weirdo. I don't want to hear from you. I'm going to eat these damn cookies. And like one of the creeps comes over to Ricky and is like, it's okay, Commander. Once they've hidden the identity seeds and turned into creeps, they'll stop disrespecting you and become your slave. And he's just like, Free cookies! Everyone gets your cookie! Have a cookie! Yeah! <laughs> That's how the book ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He eats one of them himself as well. I think that's only in the TV adaptation. No, I think he does it in the book as well. I will check, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't. One of us is going to look very stupid soon. And what's the, it's the one with the worst memory. Hang on. Why is this... Is this the ending of a book? Yeah, why did they put the ending of a book in as a preview? Oh, Stein wrote very far ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he did take a cookie. Oh! <laughs> I read that book like four days ago. <laughs> I read it a oh. month ago. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I just, I liked how unpredictable it was. It's a very different kind of story to a lot of the Goosebumps books we get where it's just like, it's not just a monster chasing the main characters, wanting to mm -hmm. eat them. There's like a scheme going on. Like, obviously, it's not very well put together where Ricky never really comes up with anything to do to stop these people. He has like the least agency out of like any protagonist. 
he doesn't do anything on his own apart from like the newspaper thing. Like that's it. Counterpoint: My Harry's Adventure. Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> you know I couldn't remember that. <laughs> So, I, you know what, I, I liked it. It was a fun one. I actually liked the light romance stuff with Iris, where yeah. he was like, I need this girl to like me. Um, mm-hmm. And then because of what's happening with the creeps, he actually couldn't put as much time into her, and like that was falling away. And mm-hmm. um, The scene where she actually um, saved him. You know what I was waiting for? I was waiting for Iris to be the actual commander. I was absolutely. I was thinking that yeah. was going to be the twist of this book. I was, I was waiting for that twist because if the creeps are expecting a commander, there has to be a fucking commander somewhere mm. in this book. Mm. And I was thinking it's going to be Iris or it's going to be Tasha or it's going to be the fucking principal because he goes to talk to the principal at one point mm. and the principal's just like, what are you talking about? And I'm thinking like this principal fucking gaslighting him, fucking trying to like convince him there's nothing going on. She's trying to figure out how much he knows about the operation. Mm-hmm. Um, she's trying to play it from the background and like will reveal herself in the end but none of that happens um, that being said book's still fun the ending comes out of nowhere it hits you like a truck well it doesn't come out of nowhere but it just happens suddenly mm-hmm. um, you get to the bank sale and you're like this is the last you're chapter like, you're like oh there's like two chapters left what the fuck there's no way this is getting stopped by then you go oh no he's not going to stop it Yeah. oh no <laughs> um, what else did I find interesting about it um for a book where nothing scary happens in the first half, I still enjoyed reading that first half. The creepiness of like him receiving these mysterious calls and messages does help. So that's that's one thing. Well, that, even that doesn't happen until like halfway through. Um, it takes you like half the book to catch up to like the first phone call. Yeah. Um, so the first half of the book is just entirely dedicated to like the enemy, the Arez, meeting Iris. Him, he's, he's getting bullied. I like the shenanigans, like the newspaper yeah, that's stuff. Yeah, it. it was, all, it was yeah. all fun stuff to read. Yeah. Um, but another thing that gets set up that I guarantee you've forgotten about mm-hmm. is there's all this weather stuff that was happening in, like, the area or, like, yeah, outside of the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, like, some natural disasters were happening or something that were, like, um, areas were getting destroyed and everything. So I'm reading that, and I'm thinking, oh, that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. He's going to put the call-out thing in the newspaper and then all these creeps, like monsters that lived in these areas that have now been destroyed, need somewhere to live. So they're all going to fucking move towards this school and towards Ricky. Um, <laughs> you, you were ready for like an asylum seeker plot? I was ready for something, yeah, like that, yeah. where it was just like, fuck, okay, now all these fucking like a massive community of like monsters is going to move to the you school. You know what that is? That's Shrek. That is Shrek. <laughs> I was seriously waiting. It was like, that, that felt like set up for that. Mm. And then no, it was like three of the kids in the school. But by the time I realized what was happening, I've got a feeling the same thing happened to Stein. Because I swear to fucking God, you wouldn't put details in like that for no reason. Mm. Um, especially it's like, um, such Attack a of the, short book. It's like Attack of the jack o lanterns where the news report of the fat people getting kidnapped. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I realized, fuck, that wouldn't make any sense because this isn't a newspaper. This is a school newsletter. Mm. So I reckon Stein realized that as well. and went, fuck shit, it has to be kids in the school. Never mind. We'll never know his madness. He did re- release a book recently about how to write these books. He would not be telling us about when he fucked up. <laughs> Calling all creeps. No, that's the thing. We're getting to the point where there's just these books that have been lost to time. And we're hoping, we're hoping for some good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we get chicken chicken soon, so, you know. <laughs> Bang is on the way. <laughs> TV adaptation? Let me double check my notes. Very well. I, uh... Again, I wrote like two... <laughs> I didn't. I don't have any notes on my phone because I broke it. Um, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure I covered all of my notes. I I wrote, love the cover. Very fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Mm, yeah, it's a good cover. A lot and of then, personality. And then my next one was just like I didn't take any notes. Nothing to report. It's just a good book. See, if you had nothing to report to the newsletter for Tasha, she's firing you. Yeah. Hey Tasha, nothing to talk about. <laughs> Do I still get my credit? <laughs> all right. TV time. Yeah, I think it is. Do you see that guy sneaking up to the school? Yeah, this is good. Yeah, they did the book. They pretty much cut straight to the halfway point. They did the in-media res, and then just continued the plot from there. They didn't bother doing the in-between stuff. Which sucks, because you can. it feels like it's missing a half of this story. Yeah, it sucks because we said we enjoyed just like the school shenanigans, mm-hmm. but also for like the spooky kids TV show, it makes sense to cut. All that stuff out. Well, they still did. It came, it came from those beneath the sink. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if they're look, standing to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but well. like, 
I, the performances are good. Ricky is just doing a George McFly and I'm not complaining. No, the kid, he, they, they got the right kid on it because that kid's awkward as hell. Mm -hmm. um, but that also means that when you get to parts where the kid's scared, yeah. he's like, oh, you scared me. <laughs> He's fucking, he's walking through a forest and he's got this giant stick cane and he <laughs> looks like Richard Attenborough in Jurassic Park. I was thinking he'd look yeah. like Jurassic Park. <laughs> and he's wearing the Forrest Gump suit. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the bullies were actually pretty fun. I enjoyed their performances. I love the scene where like they give Ricky a message and there's just a... <laughs> Do it. Do it. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be the one guy that does the thumbs up. You just wait. No one. You're gonna ruin this. Good plan, Commander. We await the transformation. Creeps rule. <laughs> Why does he keep doing the thumbs up? Who asked? So what stuff do they cut out from halfway through the book? They cut out the car wash stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, they cut out Ricky reporting for the school letter. Um. They cut out all of that stuff, actually. Yeah. So the book just opens with him being like, fuck Tasha, fuck Tasha. The TV opens with like, fuck Tasha. Um, and that's it. You know, you're never really given a reason for it outside of just, she's fucking bullying him like every other kid in this fucking school. Yeah. Um, but it works. They set up early where it's like, there's this tuna surprise that no one eats at this school. We don't know why they keep serving it. And so he has this idea, well, we'll put the identity seeds in the tuna surprise. Everyone eats the tuna surprise. Mm. And then no one eats it. And, and then the creeps are like, oh. <laughs> yeah. What else happened? Um, the, the creeps effects were not amazing. I still liked it enough, though. They didn't look like the covers. Because it, I guess having mouths that long yeah. would have been hard. It looked like the cover of Annie Wars whenever they transform. Just yes. Like... <laughs> Um, I complained about how much paint they had in one scene. Just too much paint. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Uh, oh, okay. I don't like the way he did that. I was ready really for him to lick it. Um, I think that's it. Music. Yeah, the music was too loud and, like, wrong. Just bad music. There was, um, when... Like, Iris comes in pretending to be the sergeant of the creeps. There's, like, this victorious military music playing. Maybe you should reveal the real plan, Commander. Commander Ricky, Sergeant Iris huh? reporting for duty. I'm the second in command. And, like, you're, the feeling you're supposed to have is, like, oh, my God, Iris is in on this, too? Oh, no. Um, and there's also a scene where, like, the seventh graders are bullying Ricky into singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I have this like ominous version of Mary Had a Little Lamb playing in the background. Let's not congregate in the walkway. Move on. At least you know all the words. It was, uh, yeah. They were very ahead of the times with that one. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that is basically what Pooniverse is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It was fine. I would definitely say that Vampire Breath was the better of the two for the TV adaptations. Um, but again, they basically just did the book. They just cut out the stuff that they could. Yeah, would have liked a two-parter. I liked at the end where, you know, you obviously can't show all the kids turning into creeps. Yeah. So they just have them show up in the reflection <laughs> just of like his, the glasses. PG in his glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I'll allow it. Yeah, it ends. Oh, what was that fucking cut? Seeds in the cafeteria food. It's a good plan. Maybe we should do this tomorrow. Did I miss something? Did I just jump to a new scene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that was a very abrupt cut. Do you reckon this was planned to be a two-parter and then just something happened in the filming and they were like I was not looking at the TV when that happened, so I don't know how abrupt it was. Yeah. It didn't feel right. I don't think after us were like paying 100% attention, so yeah. what happened? We were just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why are we in a different building? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. <laughs> it was fucking weird. There's always some fucking quirky um, editing with these things. Um, yeah. I don't have anything else to say. I can't remember it. We watched it fucking 40 minutes ago. I can't remember it. Was it even 40 minutes ago? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Any last words on creeps? Um, you know, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But is it good enough to be on the board? 
I genuinely need to know because I don't feel like setting up the board if we don't have to. <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah. Here, try some. No, I insist it's good. Eat. No, I, I never eat tuna in the morning. See ya. Mm. Hmm. 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 I need a jerk. It's the fucking Minecraft villager. So we've decided calling little creeps has gone on the board. That's right. The very bottom of the board. Get him out of here. So long how I got my shrug in hand. How I got in the bin. It was through this video. Whoa. Alright. Okay. Now, here's the tough one. I'm actually not sure where I want to put vampire breath. No clue. Um... Is it better than Legend of the Lost Legend? Um... I want to say it is. How oh, fucked if I know? I don't know. <laughs> I want to say it is. Where I is... want to say it's better than Monster Blood Free. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's better than Deep Trouble, but if it is, I don't think it's better than Attack of the Mutant. So it's your call. Attack of the Mutant's pretty funky. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Monster Blood 3 will do. Done. Done. Vampire Breath added to my list. You're making me do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me work. <laughs> um, and where were we? Here. This is where... What was it called? Calling All Creeps? I forgot already. It's a good book, I swear. Alright, done deal. Vampire Breath sure stinked. Um, but it's in the middle. Yeah. It's basically in the middle. Um, which is actually where it deserves to be. Yeah. Because the book wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how that's the middle now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was a fun month, I suppose. Next month promises to be more fun. Does it? We get... We get Snowman. <laughs> hey, what do you get to read first, Hadley? How I Learned to Fly. How I Learned to Fly. They're just seagulls. <laughs> They're literally just seagulls. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's going to be... I don't think Stein can do a concept like Beware the Snowman Justice. It should be a goofy B-movie plot, but it's going to be some wanky bullshit where nothing happens until the last 80 pages. And how I learned to fly, I don't know what's going to happen in that book. I know that the kid's going to fly and I know I'm going to be bored out of my goddamn mind. It's, I'm actually picturing a book similar to uh, Let's, Let's Get, Get Invisible. Invisible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's what I reckon we'll get. Um, it'll be shit. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way that book is good. Um, and you can fucking clip this next month. I don't give a shit. Um, there's no fucking way this book's going to be good. I, I don't believe it. Um, Snowman will be funny. It'll be bad, but it'll be funny. Yeah. Um. I hope to God there is some entertainment <laughs> to be found. We are, like, how the fuck is a snowman scary? We are scraping the bottom of the barrel, guys. It'll it'll be like I was walking home from school one day, and ow, somebody just threw a snowball at me. But when I turned around, there was no one behind me, just the snowman. <laughs> People have argued about that title because there's a comma after beware, and there shouldn't be because either it's like from the snowman making that message or it's like addressing the snowman like hey beware the snowman <laughs> if you want it to be beware the snowman you, you don't put a comma in there that's what it was totally meant to be yeah, it's fine just fucking yeah, don't it. put in a comma <laughs> beware the snowman yeah. it's, uh, it's, will it be better than the snowman starring michael fassbender uh yes yes it will be actually <laughs> anyway See you next month.